The July jobs report coming in stronger than expected today. You had the economy adding 255,000 jobs. This was far more than anybody thought. And the markets like it. They're rallying right now on the news. NASDAQ and S&P 500 both hitting 2016 highs. How do you like that? Near the highs of the session right now on the uh, Dow, up 171. But while investors, they seem to like today's news, uh, what's the impact actually going to be on the Fed? Because if the Fed decides the economy's looking that good, it can actually hike rates, then the market's not going to like that, right? Joining me right now, Cato's Dan Mitchell and Standish Mellon's chief economist, Vince Reinhart. Good to see you guys. Dan, you know, starting with you, um, let, let's get to wages first. I, we got a lot to talk about here because it's kind of a meaty report. And, and I think if you dig a little deeper, um, there are some flaws with it. 255,000 jobs, hey, I'll take it. The one concern, however, is that a lot of those jobs are part-time summer-style jobs. And, you know, we're still looking at wages that while they grew year over year, they still haven't managed to top an increase of 3%. And you kind of need that if you want to see any inflation in this economy, which really hasn't seen any at all. Uh, what do you make of today's report, Dan? I guess it's a good news, bad news situation. Yeah, we had some more jobs, and I especially like 217,000 private sector jobs. Yeah. But w w what I want to see is escape velocity. I, I want to see something that's going to break this, uh, this uh, trend we've had for several years of stagnant median household income. I want to see some good news on labor force participation, because if the unemployment rate is low, mostly because people have given up looking for work, you know, that's, that's not really something that we can really celebrate. And, and so whether or not the Fed reacts one way or the other, I'm more concerned about the real economy, and that yeah, is yeah. just still a little bit flat. Yeah, no, I know you are. But, I, you know, as you look at this rally going on, Vince, right now, up 170, I think investors are relieved, they're encouraged, they want to see some kind of growth in this economy. But, you know, as Dan points out, uh, well, a lot of it's good, maybe it's just not yet enough. Uh, typically, economists would say, you know, you've got to be adding at least 150,000 jobs a month just to keep up with population growth. And if you actually, Vince, want to see substantial overall GDP growth, you need to be in the vicinity of 300, 400,000 a month. So, hey, well, we'll take 255. Do we have a long ways to go? Uh, so that, that's a, the direction's right, right? We're adding jobs. Over 400,000 people came back into the labor force so that a labor market that is performing well does attract workers. Bad news, as already noted, uh, wage increases were pretty modest, 2.6% uh, uh, on a 12-month ch change basis. Mm -hmm. But the really bad news is that the 12-month change in non-farm payrolls is about 1.7%. Mm -hmm. That's about what GDP growth is over that period. Right. So we're adding workers, but they're not adding that much additional output per hour. Oh, they're not adding that much what? Output per hour, productivity. Productivity, productivity I, is about at a standstill. And it's okay. productivity growth that lets real wages go up. That's what will get you uh, nominal wages above all right. So, so back to the markets here for a second, Dan. And, and I know you don't. I know you care about the fundamentals of this economy. And to, to both you and Vince's point, it doesn't sound very good. Um, but do you think the markets are reacting positively in part because this is one of those reports where it's good enough for people to feel a little bit better, but not good enough for the Fed to actually move? Well, I guess there's two issues. First of all, what's the real long-term trend of the economy? But then there's always a lot of Fed watching and Fed guessing going on. And, uh, and for the life of me, I think that's overstated. Uh, because I don't, think, uh, I don't think keeping interest rates artificially low is great for the economy. Uh, but a lot of people seem to think that's the case. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd much rather focus on those, those key things about wages and productivity, mm -hmm. which in the long run determine whether we have higher living standards. And that's my real complaint over the last several years, not only under Obama, Obama, but under Bush, we sure. just, we've been No, we've been I think there's plenty of blame on best. both sides to go around. Absolutely. Um, Vincent, last word to you here. When is it going to start to change? So the, the, the dirty secret central bankers have is they mostly like raising interest rates because they only raise interest rates when they think the economy has enough momentum to sustain that hit. And mm -hmm. We think it does, that economic growth is going to pick up to about 2% for the rest of the year, and the Federal Reserve will dip its toe into the water once again, raising the funds rate uh, by, the, by the end of this year. And but GDP only modestly, growth is going to be what? Uh, 
on the year about one and three quarters percent in real GDP Whoopee. terms. All right, that doesn't sound Slow. like much change to me. <laughs> Not satisfying. I, I get it from the Fed, but you know, I, I think we all uh, want to see a much uh, more robust growth scenario. Anyway, good to see you guys. Thank you so much. As always, Dan and Vincent. Thank you.